Disposal unit armed and ready, sir. Crichton, will this work? Lie mode. <laughs> of course it'll work, sir. No worries. <laughs> Hook, line, sinker, rod, and copy of Angling Time, sir. <laughs> I may surprise you to learn that Crichton isn't a robot, but a man covered entirely in latex. Sounds fabulous, doesn't it? <laughs> a man who is an actor, a humorist, a raconteur, and our first guest tonight. Please welcome Robert Llewellyn. <laughs> I've heard for this moment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, after that. That was good. Robert, welcome. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here for part of what is a daring experiment. For, for the people watching at home tonight, this is the world's first ever interactive television interview where you can decide how you'd like the interview to end simply by finding one of the 0055 numbers about to appear on your screen. Now, you'll have three choices as to how this interview can end. Number one, violent. I'm not Don't wave your stupid hands at me. You give me. You give me the... <laughs> The number's up on your screen. Number two, naked. Robert, it's just been a tremendous pleasure. I've really enjoyed it, really, yeah. seriously. Will we see you back soon? I've definitely. I really love it here. I'm going to come back. <laughs> hubba, hubba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, number three, heartwarming. Before you go, we've got a surprise for you. Your half-sister who left your family 20 years ago to go to Finland. We have her here for you tonight. Come in, Ifka Llewellyn. No. Yep. No. It is! Robert! Ifka! It's it's true. True. Now, the choice is yours. Which of those endings would you like? There are the numbers up on your screen now. You can choose violence, nudity or heartwarming. We'll, uh, we'll count up your votes as the interview goes on, and we'll end the interview as you decide. Now, Robert. Yes. Thank you for being here. How did you... Uh, being a robot... It's not an easy thing. How, what did you have to do to audition for the role? Well, uh, I sort of I w wrote a play about robots initially, which is what they saw, and then they said, come and do it. And then I suppose I had to do, um, not be like the other robots in science fiction history. And, um, uh, Marvin the Paranoid Android from Hitchhiker's Guide, R2-D2, all those yeah, sort of yeah. things. So I had to R2-D2. Is, is that the, is he the dustbin one? Yeah, that's oh, right. I see. Yes. Well, you know, you see, yes. I don't know this sort of stuff. That's right. rather tragic that you know that. Yeah, it is. Well, I have a tragic life. <laughs> C-3PO, the tall walking one. Yes. Sorry, anyway, that's yeah. quite dull. Um, so I had to, yeah, they wanted to, to, just to find a way of doing it, really. So I did sort of funny walks and silly voices. And... Well, so you actually had to run them through some silly walks? Well, uh, we talked about how he would walk, how a robot walks. I did a lot of robot walks in the play that I did, uh, yeah. that they saw, so... Um, so can you give us some examples of robot walks? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I, I mean, the one that I used was a sort of, um, it was, it was Douglas Barder. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, Tim Lakes, yep. Yeah, so it was that, that one. <laughs> You look like um, you look like Elvis Presley at age seventy-five. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing that I didn't realise was that the two writers were sitting behind a desk as uh, as I was doing that, and yes. um, then they said, "Yeah, very good, Bobby. Good, yeah, very funny." <laughs> yes. And one of them got up and uh, he got up like this. <laughs> <laughs> He's only got one leg. Oh, Sorry, no. <laughs> so did you... you... I felt slightly more like uh, R2-D2 then. Did yeah. you have a standby walk? As a I had, uh, yeah, a few, few walks. I mean, one of them was based on a kid I was at school with who had muscular dystrophy. It sounds very oh, cruel. This, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make, but he was the actual hero of the class. He was uh, the, the, bad, the baddest boy in the school. And so we did... Which is sort of very similar to Douglas Bader walk, really. Yeah. We all walked. All the bad boys in the class walked the same as him. So which was? Well, that was sort of... I mean, it's much the same, but his was more of a... His was more of a... Like that, because he had no... Right. You know, so it was... <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> but so, what the, the crime? I can tell you're cut up about this. Um, yeah. No, look, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, instead of us making fun of him, we yes. did make fun of him. But yes. he made fun of us, and we all made. It sure. sort of was we kind of integrated ourselves in yeah. a sort of yeah. loving way. He shot way. himself, didn't he? Yes. Shot himself yeah, at the age right. of fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now you've written a book actually called The Man in the Rubber Mask, yes. which is which is about Ben Crichton. What yeah. was it like? Having, I mean, that's full on makeup. It's pretty there. full on, yeah. What was it the like first being time there? was horrific. It yeah. was really shocking. I mean, you, you do get used to it, but it's looking into a mirror and there's someone else looking back at you is is quite an odd experience. It's, it's, I don't know how else you can experience it. Well, how long other does than, it take to get that on? It, the first year was five hours, five, really? five, five and a half hours a day. Um, now it's down to about two, two and a half. Yeah. Um, if I'm late getting up to. 
five and a half hours. Yeah, and is it sweaty and horrible? It's, it's, in there? Well, you can't sweat because it's glued to your face, so all your pores are blocked up. So yeah. you actually can't sweat, but you tend to then sweat from other places. Oh, they, they, it's got a channel down the back of my head, and every now and then I go like, like that, and there's. Ooh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> quite nauseous yes, the very thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you have latex on your hands as I'm, well? The, the only part of my body that's exposed when I'm in the full costume is my eyeballs. And it's hard to sweat through your eyeballs. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is covered in rubber and plastic. Yes. yes. It's super, super hit. I mean, coming to being in Queensland like I have done recently is good training, really, you know? <laughs> sort of like being Just... in Queensland with someone else's flannel wrapped around your head all day. Right? <laughs> you can imagine that. You're not allowed to do that in Queensland. No, it's you're not anymore, are you? Yeah. They, didn't they once, they once wired your hand up so you could yeah. fire flame? <laughs> I know, I was meant to light a candle with my finger, like a yes. sort of robot candle, and there was a wire going up, like a, a gas uh, cigarette lighter yep. was pulled to bits, and they use all that, they're clever, those people. And they put it inside a glove, and it, so there's a little electric charge that, to light the gas. Yep. And it kept, but because I, I was so wet, it shorted out on me, so I was going, like that, mm, I'll light your candle, sir. <laughs> <laughs> And the, and the technician going, no, it'll be all right this time, Bob. Honest, no, it's fine, it's fine, really. Do it again. <laughs> How many times did you do it? <laughs> about, uh, <laughs> we did it. We did it about twenty times, about twenty takes, and then it was cut. The whole thing. Was so twenty shown. times you had oh, an electric I'm, shock. I can't, I can't even remember. I was sort of like that. <laughs> <laughs> In memoriam. So was that yeah. the um, that was the uh, the worst Crichton moment for you? It was one of the worst, because that was also filmed in a Turkish bath. Of course, so, if you can, yeah. so the rest of the crew were in shorts and T-shirts. Yes. You know, so it was one of, the, one of the very bad ones, I can hear. Yes. Yeah, you must have lost what, about your entire body weight during Well, as you scene. can see in that shot from the, uh, the nudist part, I yes. lost an enormous amount of weight. I day. must say, one of, <laughs> um, one of us looked very beautiful in that. <laughs> yes, and I know yeah, you do. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you keep at it. Now, um, don't go away, because I want to talk to you about your hippie days. Right. Um, for those of you who uh, still haven't voted, the interactive numbers are up on your screen right now. You can decide what way you want this interview to end. Violent, nude or heartwarming. Keep those votes coming in. We'll be back with Robert Llewellyn in just a few moments. <laughs> We're talking with Robert Llewellyn, the star of Red Dwarf. Now, Robert, you weren't always a robot. You used to be a full-on hippie. I did. In, in, in my youth, yes, a long time ago, I was a full, long-haired, sit-on-your-own-hair, patched jean hippie. <laughs> How hippie did you get? I went the whole hog. I lived, I lived in a commune mm -hmm. where none of us had any of our own possessions. We shared all the money. It was in a big pot. Yep. Literally in a pot? In a big clay pot. A handmade clay pot. Of course. Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Beautifully handmade. This plot, the plot is made with love and filled with money that belongs to all of us. <laughs> no wonder we stand throughout. <laughs> so ashamed. And uh, did you, wh what did you live in? <laughs> well, there was a time, it was just quite a short period of time, that I lived in a geodesic dome. No. Yeah, I'm sorry, Andrew. Yes, I An did. An actual geodesic dome. I what built was that it myself. Like? It was, it was pretty crap, actually, to be honest. <laughs> it's not very well. I mean, the idea, uh, Richard Buckminster to Fuller, the man who designed the uh, geodesic dome, clever boy, you know, they're quite nice if you make them properly, and they, but mine was sort of cack-handed. I mean, I ran out of wood about halfway up, but if you don't know what it is, it's like a dome made of triangles. See, the hands really describe mm, it clearly. Yes, it's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so I built one. I was fascinated by it, and I built it. The deck it was on was really good. I built the deck well, and I ran out of wood about halfway up the dome, and then it was covered with sort of plastic sheet and bits of cardboard. So it's become better homes and gardens all of a sudden. Yes. Yes. So did you, uh, was, was it a truly communal thing? I mean, was there well, the shared dome, love? The dome, the dome well, yeah, oh, I'm afraid so, yes. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. What happened? She went off with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> While you were in the same dome, uh, right? In the same dome, yes, there was a bit of that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yes. Um, Extraordinary. Yes. Well, I, I, you don't, I didn't sort of mind then, somehow. It was all sort of... Because it was uncool to mind, that sort of thing. It's like, oh, you know... It's just so you didn't like, mind someone else sleeping with your girlfriend? No. Well, I mean, having a girlfriend was like a possession, and you wouldn't oh, deny that. You know? Oh, I just see. like We're just relating on the same plane for that period of time. <laughs> God, I'm glad the 70s and 60s are over. I really am. Um, now, we've got the results in of our viewer poll. Let's see what the audience have gone for, how they would like this interview to end. And it's 49% heartwarming, 27% violent. 24% yeah. I right, look and the audience have voted so uh, look it's heartwarming it is Robert it's been a pleasure having That's you on the show great to be here really. and uh, before you go a surprise for you your uh, half-sister Ifka who left the family about 20 years ago 
We've flown her here tonight from Finland, Helsinki. Please welcome Ifka Llewellyn. Come in, Ifka. <laughs> I can't believe, I can't, no, 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 seriously, I can't believe that, that our audience, our audience would choose heartwarming over nudity and violence. What's the, I mean, we all want nudity and violence, don't we? Yeah, let's have some nudity and violence. Now that's what I call television.